I'm Stephanie Hendrickson. I'm Peter Zielinski. We are with Additive Manufacturing Media. We've both been reporting a lot lately on this company called JBuild. They're sometimes referred to as the largest company you've never heard of. Um, by some accounts, the third largest contract manufacturer in the world. Uh, they have 200,000 employees spread across 100 countries. They run something like 15,000 CNC machine tools, 4,000 injection molding presses, just a huge, huge manufacturer. Big manufacturer, seeing a big change coming for manufacturing, and they're leaning into that change. Right, so today we want to talk about how Jabil is using additive manufacturing as, as a large manufacturer itself, but also what they're doing to help advance additive. So Pete, you had an opportunity to interview John Dolcinos, who's the vice president of 3D printing at Jabil. How are they looking at additive? Additive manufacturing is ready for production, in Jabel's view, but the opportunities aren't ready and the supply chain isn't ready, and those two things go together. If you want to realize the benefits of additive manufacturing, you have to design the part for additive. But once you do that, you're locked into additive as the process, and do you have enough confidence to do that? If you have concerns, the supply chain capacity might not be there. And so Jabil wants to be the solution to that. They want to break that chicken and egg cycle. They want to be the supplier ready to produce at volume using additive manufacturing. So is Jabil seeing additive as the manufacturing method of the future? The answer is kind of yes, kind of no. The kind of yes is, in talking to John Dolcinos, he wonders if there isn't this Moore's Law in play with additive technology. It is getting progressively more economical. It is getting faster. Will those progressions just continue at a steady exponential rate? Uh, which will be disruptive, and which could mean the disruption to manufacturing will come sooner than we expect. So that's the yes answer to the future. Uh, the no answer is that Jabil actually aspires just to get to the point where they don't care about additive manufacturing, right? If a, if a customer comes to them with a part, a job that really merits and calls for 3D printing, then Jabil is just as ready to produce additively as they are to produce with molding or machining or what have you. But getting to that level of readiness requires some special steps and some special considerations that Jabil has decided they needed to make. Right, so part of the way that Jabil is starting to advance additive manufacturing for their own purposes is through this Additive Materials Innovation Center in Chaska, Minnesota. Um, and so the original idea behind this facility was that it was going to be kind of this secret lab where Jabil would develop new materials uh, that they would then use to make parts for their customers. Lucky for us, those customers demanded to be let inside and to see what was going on. And um, as a result, you and I got to be the first members of the press inside. So this facility in Chaska, it's 46,000 square feet. They've got all this equipment there for developing, analyzing, printing, um, different types of polymer materials. Uh, and they're also able to manufacture uh, polymer powders and, and filaments in sort of initial quantities. Um, so they don't actually want to manufacture in Chaska. Um, the idea would be that you would develop these materials and then pass it off to a, a materials supplier on the outside. But beginning the process that way, being their own source for materials development and even their own source for some of the materials production, this is a step they don't have to take or at least don't have to take to anywhere near the same extent with injection molding. So why does 3D printing necessitate their taking ownership of materials at this stage in that way? Yeah, so there are a couple of different reasons that Jabil feels the need to have a facility like this. Um, so one is just applications engineering. There are all these materials out there for 3D printing already. Um, there are new ones that are going to be developed. And part of the purpose of this center is just to be able to match applications to materials, whether that's one that's already existing, or can we take the, the specific requirements of this application and develop something just for this part. Um, another reason is scale. 
So Jabil is thinking about additive as being a production technology on potentially a, a mass scale. And they want to make sure that not only are the right materials available, but that they're going to be available in the quantities that a company like Jabil would need. And then finally, there's this whole idea of confidence. So if the future of manufacturing is this sort of distributed model where you've got one part file and you can send it anywhere in the world to be produced, well, that means that you need the same machine with the same parameters in those different locations. And you also need to be printing with the same material. That's the only way to know that the part you're making in Singapore is going to be exactly the same as the part that you're making in California. So we still have a ways to go. Um, but you actually saw some 3D printing for production already happening in, in Auburn Hills, Michigan. What was that like? What was it like? It was so actually boring. And that's kind of really the point. Yeah, this Auburn Hills, Michigan facility for Jabil, it mostly makes medical devices. Um, mostly assembly is what happens there. It is ISO 13485 certified, uh, medical industry ISO certification. And uh, 3D printing for production has now been added to this facility. And I say it's boring the way it's playing out because they're simply um, making sure that additive operates within and conforms to this ISO certified process that is established and running there. So what I saw during the moment I was there is uh, a lot of making test coupons um, to validate outcomes and just a lot of testing and assuring the repeatability of the additive manufacturing process. So once they get to the point of production um, and they're making medical devices there, why is additive a good fit for those parts? Medical devices are frequently produced and sold at quantities that almost but don't quite really justify making a mold for injection molding. Um, and if plastic parts are being molded elsewhere and ordered in, then there's, there's a supply chain there. There's shipping there, there's inventory, there's stacking up parts that are waiting to be used. Additive manufacturing right there on site offers the opportunity to print what you need as you need it and inventory a lot less stuff. And as additive manufacturing becomes more suitable for production as the break-even break quantities of additives scale up, uh, it gets to the point where additive is the clearly more economical choice for parts at some of these medical device scales. And when I say that, you might think I'm imagining really intricate, important parts. Um, but I realized there's an opportunity for mundane parts, too. Uh, that, was, that was sort of a lesson I learned in Auburn Hills. Wheels, for example, uh, a medical device that you might wheel around the hospital or the clinic. Maybe there's an argument for some kind of special feature or design element to the wheel, but you settle for off-the-shelf wheels instead because it's just not cost-effective to, to mold and produce those special wheels. Additive takes that compromise away. Ducting is another example of that. Produce exactly the ductwork that you want, exactly tailored to the design. Yeah, so Jabil kind of has this grand vision of where they want to take additive, but they're down to talking about design, um, addressing materials, kind of just dealing with the fundamentals right now. So that's right, that's right. So, so fundamental process considerations and fundamental parts. So additive is ready for production and Jabil is a company ready to take it there. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about how Jabil is using and advancing additive manufacturing, visit the URL on your screen or read more about production on our website additivemanufacturing.media.